Hi. Hey, Jared. Can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely. What do people call you? Do they call you Jeff? Do they call you Mr. Coons? Do they call you Jeffrey? What do they call you? Uh, I think I hear dad more than anything. <laughs> Why do you think your art has resonated with so many people? Why do you think you've succeeded? I remember my first day of art school was really like a, a blast of cold water in the face because I realized I, I knew nothing. I had basically uh, no cultural history in art, in established art. I didn't know who Cezanne was. I didn't know who Brock was, Matisse. And I survived that moment. I've always wanted to create an art that automatically the viewer would realize they didn't have to bring anything to the table other than themselves right at that moment. When you look at a work of art, hopefully it excites you, it stimulates you, and you realize, oh, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And it could have nothing to do with what you're looking at, but it can just trigger it and it can get you excited about your own possibility. And it's about that moment forward. So I've tried to work with a vocabulary that's articulated to let the viewer know they are perfect. Everything about them is perfect at that moment. And it's about here forward. How has technology influenced you? How has it changed art? And how do you think it will change art in the future? You know, technology is always changing life. I mean, any tool that comes into uh, to play in the world, whether it's in harvesting food or crafting a home or to make an artwork, it changes, but it's just a tool. And so the desire, the, uh, the desire to communicate, to interpret the world, to enhance your own possibilities of expanding, and the tools can help you do that. It can help enlarge it, but it doesn't come from the tool. The tool is just kind of a stepping stone to help you continue to kind of push the envelope further. But I think that a lot of young artists sometimes become confused about technology. And uh, they think there's some responsibility with an art to be new, to be fresh, but it's only a tool. And so it, it comes from coming into contact with yourself, having self-acceptance, and uh, going outward from there and going on a journey in the acceptance of others, that you're actually able to touch people and that they realize that there's a vocabulary here that's universal, that has as much meaning to them as to you and gives us all a sense of more possibility. What is art like in a hundred years? I was talking to a teacher the other day and she was telling me that children's hands are actually kind of, they're losing the dexterity to even kind of form clay and do things because they're holding iPads and phones, and so they're much more used to this, that actually in art classes, they're having a harder time using scissors and manipulating their hands. So there can be physical changes, and those physical changes can also then adapt to other parameters that we're interested in. But this tension, this expansion, is a constant. When artists are creating any thoughts on how what's being created influences the decisions that we make or influences culture or society in a way that actually impacts tomorrow? I think when you're making a work of art, you're being honest. And if you are focusing on what you're doing and really pay attention to that, it connects you to the universal, so it connects you to other people and this kind of subjective realm of where things start off, your own interest, your own kind of metaphysics, all of a sudden connect to the universal. And in the universal, you're in contact with others. You go from kind of personal responsibility in a way to communal responsibility. This interaction between people, which is the most rewarding in life, it's the highest state that art can take you to, is acceptance of others.
Why bother? Why make art? Why, why do it? To enjoy life more. It's all about potential, and it's all about the enjoyment of the, of the body and the mind. I mean, to, to enjoy every little tingle, every little sense of feeling and possibility. And, you know, people enjoy sex, but you can feel sensations that are as heightened of that just through being excited about things. And feelings generate ideas. You know, I love the first time coming across a powerful work of art that was like a gestalt, and you felt it, and you're under the control of personal iconography, where somebody is, you know, articulated, they used a certain skill to control your feelings. And then when I realized that I could feel those sensations, I wanted to develop my own personal iconography so I could affect my feelings, continue to make them more intense, and then to share that with others. Art is what lets the self find acceptance and then to be able to move outward. And automatically, as soon as you have self-acceptance, it leads you to the acceptance of others. You learn to take care of yourself. You learn to be able to excite the self, stimulate, have feelings, have ideas, and automatically you want to share them to your community. So it uh, magnifies everything. When you have one person experiencing something, and then you take that, that transcendence, that act, that sensation, and you share it with a thousand, ten thousand, a million. So it turns the light on in the room. It lets us explore our, our senses and lets us explore our mind.